All right, so today's video is gonna be a slightly different thing. I know we're used to me making jokes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, today's video is on a Studebaker pickup that is a very solid, nice truck. Uh, I'm gonna keep this kind of very serious and to the point. Uh, the gentleman is selling it. Um, I don't know if it's reasonable or not. Um, I do know the gentleman's selling it. Uh, I believe he's asking a very reasonable price for what shape the truck is in. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video. What's up girls and guys, guys and girls. So I'm sure a couple of you have seen in the background of some of my videos, you have seen this Studebaker truck. Uh, today we're actually gonna go over it. The, guy, the gentleman is selling it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm gonna do a walk around the truck, talk to the gentleman, see how much he's asking for it. That way some of you can get an idea. If you guys wanna buy it, by all means get a hold of me. Uh, comment just down below and I will get a hold of the gentleman. Um, it is not a junkyard revival kind of a thing or a junkyard review even. Uh, this truck does not belong in a junkyard. It's actually super solid. Uh, it would clean up very nice. Uh, I'm gonna get with him about doing a uh, another polishing thing, but it will not be polishing a turd like a Datsun video. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's super cool. Uh, what you can do with some old paint, a lot of effort, and some compound and a buffer. Uh, without further ado, let's go talk to the gentleman who owns a Studebaker. All right, guys, I'm here with Doug. This gentleman behind me. Uh, he does fishing charters for a living, by the way, in case you're wondering how he gets to afford some of these expensive toys. Because <laughs> you'll see also a very cool Land Rover in the background, but we'll get to that another day. Uh, today we're going to look over his 53 Studebaker pickup. Uh, I had never really seen one, didn't even know they existed, until he brought this thing. Now granted, he brings a lot of very cool stuff back to the shop and I get to be super jealous. So, uh, it is for sale. Um, he'll go over the price in just a minute. I'm going to let him introduce and give you kind of the kind of some of the specs on it. We'll do a walk around, the usual stuff. So without further ado, here's Doug. All right. So it's a 53 Studebaker 2R10. Uh, 2R10 means it's a three-quarter ton. If it's a 2R5, it would be a half ton. And the 22 means it's 122. The 2R10 means it's a three-quarter ton. If it's a 2R five it'd be a half time and you could tell by the the stack of leaf springs under the back what gear ratio <laughs> 863 to one so i am very uncertain of the actual rear gear in this truck um based on everything i can find all the you know googling research vice versa um it comes with either a 485 or a 666 rear gear now the only way to verify this is obviously is to rip into the differential. I can I can 100% tell you one thing, this truck has a very low gear. So in other words, it doesn't like the highway. No, top speed right now without the overdrive is about 38. Uh, with the overdrive, it's a planetary gear system on the back of the three speed that you can do 45 to 47. That's top end, brand new. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, the 160, Six cylinder produces about 130 horsepower, brand new, but with the gear ratio, it'll pull anything. Yeah, and once again, you guys got to remember it is a 53. So, yeah, you know, what was the top speed back in 53? Probably, I'm gonna guess, or you know, speed limit was probably 50 miles an hour, I'd say. Yeah, probably. If that, I'll look it up and put it in the video. All right, well, these videos are not only educational for you guys, they're uh, they're educational for this guy. So, in, nine, in the 50s, when this truck was built, um, there were no speed limits. Uh, there was kind of a couple unwritten rules uh, stating that speed limits uh, in built-up areas were 30 miles an hour. Aside from that, there really wasn't one. Uh, and speed limits didn't really get introduced till 1965. So, pretty cool. Um, I don't know how many of these were made. I don't know how long they were made for. So, very cool tidbit information. Trucks were only made from 1949 to 1953. So, how many were made of the 2R10s? 37,300. Put that in perspective. Uh, for four years, they built 37,000 of them. This one still looks like it does and is in a, as good a shape as it is. Very cool little tidbit information. Uh, it has probably a three-speed manual. Three, three on a tree. Yep. Um, and it is super low. First gear is maybe 
six miles an hour, maybe. Oh wow. And uh, of course it's drum brakes all the way around. Um, it's in great shape. And they used to, they had a handle on the side of here and they would ride in the back and deliver milk. So it's been in Florida it's probably whole its whole life. life. Right. I bought it from the son of the owner um, and it sat in a barn and over in Flemington, just south of Gainesville for 27 years in a barn. Oh my God. Sitting next to it is a 1929 Model T that I'm still trying to buy. It's a sedan, but he won't sell it. And uh, I know this one's for sale. How much are you asking for it? I'd like to get 15. I think it's worth it. Um, it's got all new tires, all new brakes. Uh, the tires that were on it were 27 years old also. But uh, these are from Coker. I mean, they're, they're the same ones that were on it, but they're brand new. This truck is immaculate for its age. The, uh, all the gauges even work. Wow. It's got vacuum windshield wipers. Of course, you gotta have the RPMs up for that. Uh, it's got, everything's original on the engine except for, I had to put new wires on it because they were shot. Uh, it's got a Carter BBR1 carburetor. Uh, it was still six volts. It's, as I wrote right here, it's got positive ground. So if you go to start it, don't just hook up a battery. It won't work. I had a problem with the fuel pump overheating and vapor locking. So I put an electric six yep. volt in line just to help it. Yep, yep. For those of you who aren't familiar with vapor lock, basically the gas boils and it doesn't, it's either a very, very hard start or you end up with a lot of hesitation. And that's, that's a very common fix. There's also other fixes you can do, wrapping the fuel line and insulation, but mm, some of it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I know a really good fix is to put an electric fuel pump in. It's a super good idea, super easy to do. That, and if your mechanical pump fails, you got a backup. Um, I know he did go through the brakes when he first got it. I know all the wheel cylinders were giving him a bunch of issues. So I know he re had them all rebuilt or re rebuilt themselves. Rebuilt, yeah. I had them rebuilt. I couldn't buy them. Uh, there's a few Studebaker places. There's one in Newberry, Florida. Uh, I bought a bunch of gaskets and seals, uh, carburetor rebuild kit, uh, rear brake, brake seal. You can't get them. You have to have them rebuilt. They drill them out and sleeve them. Okay. So it's done. But uh, other than that, it's, it drives. Yeah. This is a very solid truck for a 53. I mean, it has been repainted. Um, yeah. The paint would clean up. If you guys watched my Dotson video, you guys will know that uh, I'm very talented with a buffer. Uh, I did get that truck very shiny. Um, he's super happy with it. I'd like to do that to this truck if he lets me get a hold of it, because I could make it. He uh, he did the linseed oil trick on this truck. Um, the problem with the linseed oil trick, it does work. I have no problems with it, but the problem with the linseed is it's oil. So if it sits outside like yeah. this truck does, the linseed oil doesn't last very long which is kind of the problem with the linseed oil. Um, I like that trick if you have a, a rusty ur vehicle, it gives it that nice shine without clear coating it. Because if you clear coat rust, let's be real, it's still rusting. It does look cool, it's still rusting. So uh, we'll do a walk around. We're gonna obviously take the truck for a ride. Once again, I'm not driving it because if this thing gets wrecked, I can't replace it. <laughs> Even if it's not my fault, A, I'm gonna feel bad. B, finding any parts for this thing is gonna be a challenge. Um, but like I said, this truck's super solid. It is very quiet. Just like a really nice old pickup. Very nice. All these gauges all work. Uh, he has he did start up and let it warm up, so that way you know the old vehicle is half you have to do that. Seat is in immaculate shape. The starter button is underneath the clutch. So you, you put it in neutral, you push the clutch all the way in and the starter button's right there. Yep. Which is always fun if you push the clutch in too far while you're driving. And I'm assuming underneath here is very solid. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, wow, this is like, it's immaculate. Like the bed's not rusty. It's not even all dented up. This is actually running right now. In case you're wondering, that's how quiet this thing is. You could barely tell it's running if you're standing beside it. I 
said super solid, very straight truck. Like I think this is got a little bit of rot there. Nothing crazy. It's got a little bit of rot down the back, but once again, nothing crazy. This thing's amazing. I forgot how nice this truck is. Side. No. Prior to 1963, it was illegal to get out on the driver's side in traffic. You had to slide across and get out. Ah. That's how you lock that one, push the handle down, you crawled out here and you locked it. Very cool. You watch all the old Andy Griffiths, he seems they slide across to get out. How do, ma'am? Pleasure. Oh, you mind if I give her a once over? Oh, mercy, you do whatever you like. All right. I, I'm sorry I'm late. It took me four hours for Mount Pilot. You didn't have trouble, did you? It usually takes just about an hour. Oh, well, I never drive the machine over 25 miles an hour. And I also like to give it a 10 minutes rest every half hour. How much do you want for it? <laughs> That's wild. I did not know that. This thing's wild. So there's not even any rod over on this side. It's all solid back there. It's just the one side. It does have a little bit of rot in the hood or weight reduction, if you will, right here. Nothing, once again, nothing bad. A little bit here. It has been, you know, repainted at some point. So it does have some filler in it, as you can see. It just hangs in there. Like, look at this, guys. This is from 1953, which, that's math, again. And it is running off the tank, so the tank isn't full of crap. Like, that's how solid this truck is. So 1953 means it's, so that's 47 plus 22. Oh, man, this is math. 67, 69 years old? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look, I'm 40 almost. I don't look here this nice. So finding one of these is really hard to do to begin with. They said I had never even seen them until he brought this thing here. I kind of heard about them, didn't really know they still existed. And that's the other thing. Like I pointed this out in the Dotsa video. One more time. You, you can't duplicate that. Okay. Wow. Now, oh, because the window does it. Yeah. For those of you younger generations, will never appreciate these windows as much as the older generation. This is basically your AC back in the day. So usually there's a bar that goes right here. It's part of the window on this. So that's super cool that it does that. And these provide a lot of air and then usually when they're this old you go to move them and they don't they just kind of flop around they don't stay this is obviously original glass it is isn't it, it? Is. dual light i don't know if it'll come in the camera in the, uh... but check this out it still has a glove box that's in one piece it's not rotted out. It doesn't appear that something was living in there. Does the ashtray open? Oh yeah. Six volt light bulbs. And it still has the ashtray. Come on, man. Is that a dome light? Yeah. That's the the switch is bad. The switch is in. Uh, I think it's in the ashtray. I got to change the switch. Now. And uh, the wipers work. I'm assuming. Turn the knob on the top. See if they got enough vacuum. There you go. You hear the motor change? The engine and the truck change. You gotta have some RPMs to yep. create vacuum. So the wipers do work, they are vacuum operated. Once we drive it, it'll move. All right, so him and I are gonna go for a ride. He's gonna drive, I'm gonna sit here and uh, enjoy the, the 40 miles an hour at top speed. Oh, you aren't kidding, this thing literally. Kidding. We just uh, 
don't want to block too much traffic. You want to just go up and get Circle K or yeah, that's, that's the usual. Uh, the usual one. Assuming it's a non synchronized trans, non synchronized, yeah. I don't really don't want to pull out in front of anybody either. Yeah, I don't blame you. Old truck problems. Anybody who's driven anything from the 50s knows this problem. Also, a lot of you probably don't know what three on the tree means. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in first now. So it's into you and down is first, up and away. Second, down and to your knees. Third, reverse is up. It's again, not a new car. Old truck problems. Oh, it is short. There we go. Problem with newer fuels. When this truck was um, when this truck was built, it had a lead in the gas. Yes. And uh, B, it didn't have ethanol. Ethanol in today's world eats carburetors. It rides actually kind of nice though. It's not bad for an old pickup, especially a three quarter ton. Yeah. I got to use my turn signal too. So I'm guessing this didn't come with turn signals. There you go. Or seatbelts. Yeah, I noticed that. All right, so to go ahead and close this out, it's a 1953 Studebaker, three quarter ton pickup, three on the tree, super incredibly low gears. Uh, it's actually really comfortable, surprisingly it's enough. It's actually more comfortable than a lot of the newer trucks. Um, it is for sale for 15 grand. I'm sure he'd be open to reasonable offers. In other words, don't be the marketplace people and get a hold of us. Oh, I'll give you $500. Yeah, I bet you friggin' would. It's for sale, but not on sale. That's right. It is for sale, not on sale. He does not need to get rid of this truck. Personally, I enjoy coming to work and staring at it every day. It's a super cool old pickup. Um, with the needing a little TLC, um, I'm hoping that he lets me buff it out because I'd really like to make it shiny, kind of like I did with the Datsun video. Guys, I appreciate you watching. If you haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I welcome all comments, even if they're creative criticism, that word. So guys, enjoy life. It's way too short, which is why I, my personal passion is cars. I enjoy them. I love working on them most days. So guys, take care. Have a good day.